We think we might have been on the ground a little bit last night. We're at four feet. Try and lift the anchor. That does actually look pretty gunky. Three feet. <laughs> oh man. Is it low tide right now? Low tide is at 3 a.m. Hmm. Not the worst thing. <laughs> well, we're with the wind, so I think we're not on the bottom. We anchored last night and it was a, it was coming up on a super high tide. And we're in a spot, it's like a very sandy, mucky spit. There are like sandbars, I guess. Um, that, that shift over time and we think our boat may have drifted slightly onto a, onto one of the sandbars or near one and because the tide's been changing so much around here the amount of room we have under the, the keel has been very low at near low tide so we're like mid tide right now so probably in the night it was even lower and we might have been in the muck a bit there also happen to be just like really massive tides like super super low tides while we've been here so um yeah we think we might have been on the ground a little bit last night so we're gonna keep an eye on the tide tables and just see we might have to move to a bit more of a deeper spot but it is really hard to tell because the sandbars do shift so yeah we've, we're just like relying on the depth sounder right now but like Jonah said, it's a sandy bottom, so it's not really gonna hurt the boat. We just wanna be able to get out of here when the time comes to get out of here. extendable arm is a little stuck right now so we're gonna have to work on that but we're on solar baby <laughs> off grid off grid it's exciting it feels so good we all of our power now is either generated by the diesel engine which is fair that's a fuel but all of our like the most power that we use is from the sun which is pretty amazing feeling get the apple buddy nectar of life. Mmm. Tastes ten times better when you're out here. Thank you. Not yet. We like to see what the day. Wow. I think it's nutritious. Coffee is, it's like, it's sort of essential to the function of my body, so I, I do consider it nutritious. I think I really think it's interesting. Yeah, like I can tie up while you run or something. Go, little dinghy, go!
oh, wrong way. Okay, so we are currently on the hunt for a fuel filter. We, Jonas spotted a boat, like a kind of a passenger boat that was taking people from where we were to the mainland. So we super quickly hopped in the dinghy, ripped over there and basically asked them if they could give us a ride. And it was awesome, they got us on. But our ride back is at 12 noon and we have, I don't know, like an hour to find this fuel filter. And the first store we went to said there was none in the area, so we've cross-referenced and are walking very quickly to another place. Oh, bunny! Wow, hey there, buddy. I can't spend too long, but you're cute. Anyway, so that's what we're up to right now. We're on a mission. We'll fill you in more later. But basically, ideally, we have this part before tomorrow and have the part installed before tomorrow because we're hoping to leave early in the morning, so. We call ahead though, this place should have it, so fingers crossed. <laughs> Who would have thought it would be so difficult to find a fuel filter around here? Hey. We had a very successful trip into town to get the fuel filter. Uh, we ended up having to walk to a couple of places, but we found it and made it back to the boat, which is awesome. But we have a very minor dilemma right now. We were dinging back and we knew we were close-ish to a sandbar, but we think we might actually be anchored on the sandbar. So with the wind right now, we're totally fine. We have 10 feet un underneath us. But if for some reason we flip around, like if the wind flips, then there's a chance we may swing onto the sandbar and potentially hit ground. So we really don't want to do that. We don't want to get stuck because we will have to leave probably early in the morning. So I think we're going to move the boat to avoid, to avoid any grounding incidences. Um, it might be kind of difficult with the sandbar. It's low tide, but High tide isn't until like midnight tonight, so yeah, we'll see how it goes. Hopefully it goes well. And the wind should hopefully push us back out into deep water. And then we're just gonna move up a little bit and try and anchor in a bit better of a spot. We are changing the secondary fuel filter on our M30 diesel engine. Here's the new one. How's it looking? <laughs> Look at the diagram, so we're gonna what does it say? put a pad down. Nice. Grease the gasket. Nice. Screw it on. Turn the key. First off, we don't want any of the diesel to go into the bilge. So we have a pad here, a container, which will hopefully catch any drips. It's kind of awkward. And a new fuel filter. 
um, is it is a secondary filter. So there's another one back there, but we're just going to change this one first because it's easy to do on the fly and we're hoping this is the main problem. And I guess we might as well just take it off. A yeah. Bit. We might need a fuel wrench, I guess, eh? Yes, yeah, I'm hoping. Or a filter wrench. Yes. I'll just see if I can get it loose and then. I got it. That's good. It's slippery. Might be too big though. Yeah, it's too big. Okay. Hands it is. You can like use tape too, but I'm this is just if I can get it off, it'll be easier to. Assuming it's lefty loosey. Yeah. This is the right weight, right? I'm just tightening it. You turn it this way? Turns out I just got my lefts and rights confused. Classic, eh? Classic. Okay, well, <laughs> that was quick. We're in a very busy right. anchorage and people keep flying by with huge boats. Holy! It gets a little old sometimes. We're trying to change a fuel pump here. That does actually look pretty gunky. Now I put the new one on. It's so slippery. I think that was about three quarters. Yeah, if it's hand tight, then that's enough. Yeah. Because can you see the... I can see the little thing here, yeah. It okay. went from here to here. Yeah, right on. Okay, that was quick and easy. Quick and easier than I thought. I don't know when the last time this was changed. Um, we haven't changed it, so... It's probably overdue. So now what we're going to do is we are going to bleed the lines of any air. So one of us is going to go up and turn on our starter key because our starter key just um, initiates the fuel pump. So we'll get the fuel pump going. And then on this engine, there are two bleed valves, one here. So we'll do this one first. And then the second one is right here. And we'll do that one second. And we're basically just bleeding it so all of the air is out and it's just kind of like spurting diesel fuel. So again, it's a little messy. I'm going to keep this pad down because we don't want diesel in the bilge. And yeah, then we'll be able to start the engine and hopefully, fingers crossed, it'll get the diesel it needs. Jonas is going up there. He is going to turn on the switch. I've got a bunch of paper towel here and then this is loose. Do I take it all the way out? Uh, probably. Okay, there's the air. So we bled the fuel through this valve here, took off the bolt, waited for all air to come out, and then it's, the fuel started like spurting without any air. Put that back in, turned off the fuel pump. So the next step is to try and start the engine. Here we go. Start her up. We have success, the engine started, and we let it idle for a few minutes just to make sure if there was any air left that it would work its way through. And then we revved it up a bit, just in neutral, got to get the RPMs up, because that's what was happening when we, when the RPMs increased, the engine would like be starved of fuel and turn off. So yeah, the fuel filter seemed to work. It's running well. We just talked to our neighbor and they were saying they had a similar issue and it could be build up within the fuel tank as well. So that will be a project for the future. We're not gonna do that today because <laughs> it's running fine. And basically what probably happened is when we were out in the super choppy conditions, the fuel got all churned up, which also churned up the sediment or whatever's in there. And yeah, just clogged something. So we're good. We, there's, there's a child screaming or something. Anyway, so we've been working all day. This is our day off. So we're gonna go spend the rest of it on the beach and just relax for the rest of the evening. <laughs> yes. Much needed. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> oh, we're almost out of gas, eh? Oh, really? Something to consider. 
Do we have extra gas? Alrighty, push us off. Going on a trip. guys are tent caterpillars and they're actually native to North America. The caterpillars construct these white silken tents which they use for shelter and molting. They inhabit and feed on deciduous trees and sometimes bushes. Eventually the caterpillars will disperse and turn into moths. Heavy defoliation of the trees can cause higher susceptibility to disease and can stunt the tree's growth. That is a gigantic banana slug. It's huge. And blends in quite nicely with the moss. These yellow flowered shrubs are scotch broom and they are an invasive species. It was originally brought over from Europe as a garden ornamental. It invades sunny, disturbed sites and can increase wildfire intensity and crowd out native plants, which are important for ecosystem functioning. A scotch broom plant can live up to 25 years and their seeds can survive in the soil for 30 to 60 years. Me too, I'm ready for like some dinner and just chilling. We've got like a three kilometer walk. For... I know. <laughs> and then a boat ride. And then a boat ride and then finally we'll be home. <laughs> Yep. Yep. Yep.